Albert Einstein's unified field theory sought to unify the forces of electromagnetism and gravity. However, Einstein was unable to complete the theory during his lifetime. Mr. Harriman has pursued this theory and laid the foundations for its completion. His solutions to Einstein's field equations, which describe the properties of a gravitational field surrounding a given mass, incorporating the concepts of torque or spin and the Coriolis effect, the sideways deflection of an object moving across the surface of a rotating body caused by the body's rotation to produce his unified field theory. In 2003, he founded the nonprofit organization the Resonance Project Foundation in Hawaii, USA, which is dedicated to the unification of all sciences and philosophies emerging from a complete and applied view of the physics underlying the wheelworks of nature. Supreme Master Television recently had the honor to speak with Mr. Harriman about the unified field theory. Today we'll discuss a wide range of subjects with Mr. Harriman, from space travel to the relationships between geometry and spirituality. Central to Mr. Harriman's concept of the universe is the idea of vacuum or space in which we interact and create our reality. In this model, Every atom, including those we are composed of, is a black hole that both absorbs information from the vacuum and also radiates information out into it like a white hole or a black hole operating in reverse. The vacuum as well could be called God. It's everywhere. It knows everything. It can be found uh, at any place. It knows all languages. Da 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 da. Um, it self organizes. It organizes everything. That is God. Can the power of the vacuum possibly be applied to address urgent issues such as climate change? If we start to understand these new physics, if we start to understand that the atom is a mini black hole that's fed by the vacuum continuously, that's why the electron spins for billions of years with no you know, apparent input energy, um, then we start to understand the mechanics of the foundation of creation. Look at the density of the vacuum, which is 10 to the 93 grams per centimeter cube. Let me give you an idea. If I took all the stars in our universe, there's a 100 billion to 300 billion stars in the galaxy, and there's billions of galaxies, and I took them all and I put them all in a centimeter cube of space, the density of that centimeter cube would be 10 to the 55th grams per centimeter cube, okay? That is 39 orders of magnitude less than the density of the vacuum. We know it's there. So if we were to extract one billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a percent of what's there, uh -huh. we would have enough energy to run this whole planet. There would be no pollution, there would be no carbon output, and there would be enormous amount of energy for anybody that needs it anywhere, anywhere on our planet, anywhere in our universe. Mr. Harriman believes that the time is fast approaching when science will fully understand how the universe operates. We have to understand this fundamental force of gravity and the structure of the vacuum in order to do this. And we're very, very close. I believe w that this is eminent. This is not in, uh, you know, 20 generations from here. Uh, I think that we're going to see that change in our generation. I believe we're going to see that change in the next 10 years. Interplanetary travel will no longer be a dream when this new age of science arrives. I predict that within a very short amount of time, and I'm talking 20 years and so, people will be able to get on a ship and go and visit Jupiter for the weekend, go to the moon and so on, uh, casually, just because we've understood how to use gravitational fields and we're able to move with the universe instead of fight it. And, uh, and I think this is a very important part of our evolution. It's crucial to 
human evolution and to transcending the limited uh, resources that we have on our planet. Sacred geometry is said to be a visual expression of the universe. For example, the famous Flower of Life has been carved or etched into many temples and holy places around the world. Another expression of the universe is the double torus shape seen in weather patterns on Earth. Many masters that were able to reach that point of stillness, that point of singularity at the center of their existence, actually witness of the fundamental principle, the fundamental geometric principle, I believe, of creation. That double torus we were talking about is the function of the space-time manifold. But when it goes to the zero point, where it goes to singularity, where absolute stillness is present, then the geometry goes to the minimum amount of vectors for stability, the minimum amount of vectors for absolute equilibrium. It's looking for absolute equilibrium and it's going towards infinitely cold so it's m it's minimizing the vectors just like a water droplet cools off mm -hmm. and and goes to a very specific set of vectors fourfold geometry hexagonal geometry and makes the snowflake in my equation i start to show that actually the double torus is a result of this cuboctahedron this tetrahedral array uh, torquing, producing the spin, but that the central part of the spin is stillness and that this tetrahedral array, this tetrahedron, is like a, a 3D star of David, a 3D six-pointed star, which you find in the heart of the Buddha, you find it in the, you know, in the Jewish tradition. When we return, we'll present more of our engaging interview with Mr. Nassim Haramein. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Spirituality is the physics that we haven't yet understood. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television, where we're visiting with pioneering physicist Mr. Nassim Haramein, who explains our universe from the perspective of physics. Water is the source of life on Earth and is sacred. A newborn is composed of approximately 75% water. In short, we humans are fundamentally connected to water. Six-fold geometry or the four-fold geometry is fundamental to the structure of space-time, and actually, that that geometry is matched by the geometry of the water structure, and that's why all life emerges from water, because it's the information is going from the structure of space-time to the water molecule, and then the molecule produces the biological organization of our biosphere. And many, many researchers look for the seed of consciousness in the brain. And, you know, they keep forgetting that the brain is 90% 90, 90 water, only 10% gray matter. And they're looking in the gray matter. But the fact is, is that if you remove the gray matter, you still can have consciousness. For instance, there's people that are born with very little gray matter in their uh, head, mostly water and that function absolutely normally. However, if you remove the water, you're done, right? Meditation brings one in tune with the universe and merging with the Supreme Godhead, where the One is spoken of in many spiritual and religious traditions. The meditation is a way during your awakened state to actually connect with that inner, uh, that part that's going in, that's going towards singularity. That sense of center, it's like a, an axe of spin of your body, 
uh, is represented in uh, Vedic tradition and Buddhist tradition as the vortex entering the crown and, and the uh, Kundalini uh, spiral going up. And the chakras are octaves at each level. And so the third eye, the throat, the heart, the ara, and the, you know, the sexual chakra and the base are all part of the octaves of these spiral that meet at the heart chakra. So now you can start to actually describe some of the most esoteric knowledge in terms of physics and the physics of creation, not just any physics, the physics of, that makes everything occur. Nassim Hiramain believes that when we interact with the vacuum, we receive feedback, thus creating our reality. How then does the law of karma fit into this model? In your view, is there a difference between putting out something positive out there versus a negative? Uh, let's say somebody's doing something positive, uh, good for the world, um, versus somebody who's, I don't know, polluting a lake, it more is on the negative side. Right. Well, because of this feedback, right, you will it will f be fed back to you. The law of karma is actually the description of that fundamental feedback of creation. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you, you know, send a lot of negative thoughts into the field, then most likely a lot of negative things are going to happen to you and to your environment around you. And so when we look at our environment on our planet, when we look at where we brought this planet to, uh, to basically the brinks of destruction and only like 150 years of, of technological advancement. Uh, you know, it's because the technology we're developing uh, is mostly based on warfare and on destruction and on competition and so on. But we have that choice. We can actually start to become harmonious with nature, feedback more positive uh, information to the vacuum and then the technology that will develop is more positive technology and as well the synchronicity that will occur in your life will start to support your path more and more and it will become more and more apparent as you move forward. To tap into our true potential, we have to turn inward. I think what's important for the viewers is to know that they have an infinite potential, that within them, not in an esoteric way even, but even in their material existence, all the atoms they're made of is infinite amount of information, infinite amount of knowledge already present within them, that they can access it if they take just a little bit of time, even if it's five minutes every day, to just turn their senses inwards and go towards that singularity, go towards that point of stillness within themselves. Meditation, prayer, meditation, any techniques that allows them to turn their senses inwards instead of being outwardy, uh, and just take the time to center, then they get closer and closer and closer to that singularity. They connect with the infinite nature of their existence, the infinite nature of the space around them, and the infinite wisdom that's already within them. And then their dharma will just unfold beautifully because everybody has a dharma, everybody has a mission, everybody has something to do here that's very important. Our sincere thanks go to Mr. Nassim Haramein for sharing with us his brilliant research on the unified field theory and how physics and spirituality combine in our universe. May the Resonance Project Foundation have much success in providing the world with more noble solutions and knowledge so as to help lead our civilization into a new golden era. Books and DVDs by Nassim Haramein are available at www.theresonanceproject.org.